Okay, a fifth section of the test is on colonial self-government. So most of the 13 colonies were established under royal charters that were issued by the King of England. And so by the early 1700s, the typical colonial government looked like this. There was a, the King in England appointed a governor. So there would be a governor in Virginia, you know, a governor in, in Georgia, in the different states. And then that governor would appoint members of the upper house. So there would be two houses of representation, the, the upper house appointed by the governor, and then the lower house, which would be elected by the people. And then there was a court system. So that's the way that the basic framework in all the 13 counties. The king appoints the governor, the governor appoints the upper house, the people elect the lower house, and then there's a court system also. Uh, more on uh, colonial government, benign neglect. In the 1760s, Britain ended benign neglect. Benign neglect was Britain had pretty much let the colonies do what they want to. You know, we're, we're neglecting you because we think you're doing a good thing, you're fine. But in the 1760s, King George came in and he said, this is ended. We're going to start, you know, doing, requiring more from our colonies. We won the French and Indian War. Uh, we, we paid a lot to help protect you colonists against bad Indian tribes and against uh, the French. And so we want you to pay. We had to pay for our soldiers, so the British issued the Stamp Act in 1765. The colonists were outraged. How can you do this? Even though Britain felt like it was the right thing to do. But the colonists said, no taxation without representation. You can't tax us without giving us a say. Give us a voice in the parliament. So tensions developed. So the Boston Massacre happened, the Boston Tea Party. Uh, so the first Continental Congress was called to try and peacefully oppose the British policies. So we're calling a, a, a Congress of our people here in the 13 counties to say, King George, please, you know, listen to us. Um, and they, but still thought it could lead to war, so they started developing uh, militias. Well, long story short, you know, here's, here's a timeline that a student drew, so different, all these different events that happened. King George didn't listen. Uh, you know, he just said, no, you guys are impudent, you guys are rebels. And so armed conflict was coming. So a second Continental Congress was called when it was realized that King George wasn't going to listen to them, and so reluctantly they voted to ask Thomas Jefferson to draft a Declaration of Independence, you know, basically declaring war on the strongest power in the world, Britain. The famous part of the Declaration, we hold these truths to be self-evident, all men are created equal. There's that American stream of equality. The Declaration says if a government fails to protect people's rights, the people should abolish it. See, Jefferson borrowed from Locke's provisional nature of the social contract. So on July 4, 1776, the members of Congress formally approved the Declaration of Independence, declaring war on the most powerful nation on earth. And so uh, there's a picture of the Boston Massacre. So we, we went to war with Britain. By the war's end, uh, many Americans were worried about the nation's ability to govern itself. You know, we had experienced a lot of problems in the war. Some wanted to make George Washington a king. And there's a picture with Washington with the crown. In other words, we need to give somebody like dictatorial power. So uh, the, there was that first Continental Congress, then the Declaration of Independence. And then the Articles of Confederation were written, and those were the articles that governed the colonies. And you need to know that the major weakness of those Articles of Confederation was they didn't create a strong central government. There was no executive branch, there was no court system, there was no central treasury, and so the Articles created a weak central government. That's why we needed to get together and have a constitutional convention to write a new document. So in 1787, this, we had this constitutional convention, so now the sixth part of the test, uh, making the Constitution. So the Constitution began in uh, 1787. James Madison is often called the father of the Constitution and the father of the Bill of Rights. He really shepherded things through in the meetings that were held there. These 55 white guys that, that signed, you know, the, the, Declar or the, uh, the Constitution. The two sides that were there were Federalists and Anti-Federalists. You need to understand these. The Federalists wanted a strong central federal government. And they wrote the Federalist Papers to try and uh, get, get uh, other Americans on their side to get this Constitution passed. The Federalist Papers were written by the Federalists who wanted a strong national government. The Anti-Federalists said, look, we don't care about you know, strong national government. We're afraid you're going to abuse our rights. We want a Bill of Rights, and we're going to oppose this Constitution until we get 
a Bill of Rights. So there was a compromise made. The Anti-Federalists agreed to support the Constitution now in exchange for the Federalist promise that they would pass the Bill of Rights in the first Congress that met. And so the Constitution was ratified. The Anti-Federalists dropped their opposition. So remember, understand this. The Federalists wanted to pass the Constitution. They wrote the Federalist Papers. Uh, John Jay uh, and others wrote the Federalist Papers. And then the Anti-Federalists said, we don't want the Constitution passed because we want a Bill of Rights. So those are those two sides. So these are uh, compromises that, that had to be resolved to, for the Constitution to go. The, the uh, representation, the Virginia plan was, hey, have the houses, the two houses of Congress based on population. But the New Jersey plan said, no, let all states get equal representation. So you had these two different sides. The big states wanted you know, to get a number of representatives based on population. The small states said, no, we should all get the same. So of course the compromise was what we have today. We have the upper house, the Senate, every state gets two senators, so we all get the same. But in the House of Representatives, you get the number of representatives based on your population. So that was the first, that was called the Great Compromise. Then there was the three-fifths com compromise. If we're going to calculate how many representatives each state gets, how do we count slaves? And of course the South said, well, they should be counted as one, you know, they're, they're each people. And the North said, you don't treat them like people, you don't even let them vote. You can't count them. And so this, the compromise was, we'll count slaves as three-fifths of a person to calculate representation. And then on commerce, uh, the question here is, if the Constitution lets Congress control trade, Congress, heavily situated in the North, could outlaw slavery. And so the South you know, didn't want that to happen. They didn't want uh, Congress to outlaw slavery. So uh, the compromise that was made was, okay, the South said, look, we won't outlaw the slave trade until 1808. And so here in the you know, late 1700s, the South said, okay, we'll sign on to that. That'll allow us to buy and sell slaves for a while. Okay, you should know these vocabulary words. Uh, they're going to be on the test. So rule of law, representative government, limited, limited government, popular sovereignty. And uh, this timeline on page 42 and 43, which you've got, you have a notebook assignment about this. Make sure you know these concepts, you know, where they came from. And the essay question you might be looking at is something like this. You've learned about the roots of American doc democracy. Write an essay in which you talk about how not having two of those roots would affect America. All right. The roots of American democracy. You've been blessed by them. Learn about them. <laughs>